Here I am. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Bead Shop Live. It is Wednesday, October 6th, and <laughs> nope, wasn't having any techie problems, Janice. I was just making sure that I had everything ready to go, including a cup of something right here. So we're all good. So sorry, I didn't mute myself. So you can kind of hear me rustling around in the background. So sorry about that. All right. We've got a good show today. It's uh, great to have all of you all here. Um, we're going to have a really good time making this really great bracelet that I'm going to show you. Um, I've got so many things. So it's going to be um, full, 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 full. So Let's jump in and get started. And um, I have a couple of things I want to share with you. Um, well, first about the schedule for October. So October um, marks our sixth anniversary, six years of us broadcasting live. We did our first live bead shop live broadcast um on the uh 26th it looks like the 26th i believe of october in of 2016 so um so we're going to be going into our sixth year so it's our five year anniversary of um so it's five not six going into our sixth year um of doing these live broadcasts so we have a lot of fun things planned and then the last broadcast of uh the month this october 2021 is going to be just crazy it's going to be wacky um i drea and i are putting together some fun stuff so um so watch those newsletters and everything and um I'll have more info about that. Um, Mel is saying that she was there for the very first broadcast, which I love that. Many of you have been um, here for um, our broadcast through Thick and Thin, through Health, through COVID, through uh, just everything, right? Through fire, through flood, all of those things. So we really, really appreciate you guys. And if this uh, is your first time watching, welcome, welcome. If this, if you are a tried and true watcher, welcome back always. We really, really appreciate it. And just so that you guys can find us, for those of you who um, are fairly new um, or need a reminder, you can follow us on a lot of our different social channels, okay? You can follow us um, at beadshop.com on Instagram. Uh, go and join our almost 7,000 member, the bead table, our Facebook group, which is great. And a great way to find all of our broadcasts is to hit that like and subscribe button over on YouTube. I'm going to be making a best of um, broadcast um, 
uh, playlist over there. So you guys will find some of our favorites. And we're going to ask you um, what your favorite episodes were as well. Um, and so we're going to be uh, walking down memory lane with those as well. So, um, so you can find us on all of that social. And of course, you can jump right over to beadshop.com to find information on the project and the products that I'm going to be using today. Make sure and sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products that are coming because next week I've got something new for you that I'm going to be working with on Wednesday that I think you guys are going to love. So uh, that being said, uh, let's take a look um, and see uh, what I've got to show you guys today. So um, I'm going to actually take it a little tighter. There we go. Um, and we just launched um, these really great, this is the project we're going to be doing here. So hang tight. I think you're going to um, like this a lot. Um, I did this on a free tip Friday and we're going to discuss the leather and the, the chain and stuff in a second. But um, so what we've got here, let me just make this big so you guys can see it. Um, we just launched these really great green girl pieces um, and a couple of them are new. A couple of them are a little bit older that um, um, Cynthia has had for a while. But uh, we just added these. So these are available in our uh, in our shop and we've got these four. Um, this raven one here, Hope is the Thing with Feathers that Perches in the Soul. And Emily Dickinson has a top hole up there um, that's almost, will definitely accommodate a 1.5 millimeter leather. It's a nice big one. It's about 28 millimeters. Let me measure this one. What I love about this one is that it has two holes, a top and a bottom. So it's a great component for stringing. 26.3 millimeter, a little bit smaller. Um, and we have the entire Green Girl collection. If you go, you can see that Gita, thank you, Gita, as always, for this, these many, many years of linking and all of this beautiful, the beautiful stuff you do. Uh, find the entire Green Girl collection right on beadshop.com, collections green slash, I mean, green um, hyphen girl, okay? So uh, on the back, it says unfold your own myth, uh, which is, I think it's lovely. This one is a um, flower cross, and this one is a little more than 32 millimeters, and it says consider the flowers on the back, which I love. And then this square, this bunny and moon, which is a nice heavy one, it's 36 millimeters, 36 and a half millimeters square. And then you can see it's thick. It's about three, a little more than three millimeters in width. So this is also a lovely one. Drea has this one um, and she's going to be making something with this that we're going to share. Um, one of the things though that struck me about this piece and so on about a lot of these pieces and so we've kind of been working with a theme here lately on our projects, right? Um, and we've been kind of working I think in this unintentional um, color story, right, that Janice and I have been making some of these samples and doing these. And so I, I grabbed like a bunch of these, kind of our latest, and I also wanted to show you this is up and finished. You can see here um, that this one is all done and the project map and everything is up on the website. So that one's finished. But these all kind of have kind of a nice fall like common color story to them. And I thought a little bit about mixing in some of these new pieces from um, Green Girl. And this piece, especially this bunny, really hit me. Um, I think because the squares, the back that Janice did here, these um, kind of squares of ultra suede and the bunny in front, and you can attach there's holes here open kind of spaces where you could slip your strands through and you know tie them off that way and this would be i think a really cool piece to go in the front or you could have it go to the side and drape down maybe a little bit longer you could also just put one of these 
in a single strand along the side. I think it would look just great, right? I love it. Um, and someone said here that they got the bunny and you can't wait to paint her. These are pewter. So they do take metal paints and stuff very nicely. If you jump over to Cynthia's um, Facebook or Green Girl Facebook, you can also um, uh, probably check out her blog or her Instagram is the best place, I think, to follow Cynthia. Um, you can... Um, she does a lot of surface treatments and stuff with these, but Gilder's paste will work really well on this. Um, a lot of different metal treatments will be great. So Cynthia does actually color these. Sometimes she also uses alcohol inks, which is great. So um, these are these take patinas very, very well because they're untreated pewter. They've been tumbled, so they're polished. Um, but they take patina very, very well. Um, I was also thinking about doing something. I'm not a super big cross person, but I, I love this one and I love the sentiment behind it. Um, consider the flowers. I think it's beautiful. Um, and so I was thinking how great it would look. This is one of those wraps that I did that had all of those different um, leather braids and stuff in it. But I thought that um, it would look kind of cool either on a bracelet like this, um, you know, if you just did this leather portion, or if you did like a wrap or a necklace, I feel like this kind of goes right in there, which I think is is really beautiful i love it and then you could highlight like this rose it's kind of like a tudor rose kind of feeling to it in the center um and uh there's a note uh in the chat that says lightly sand before you add uh the gilder's paste and so you could kind of whoops buff this out so the shine um kind of goes down you knock the shine down a little bit and then um tap i use like a makeup sponge to apply gilder's paste um, and then you can kind of sand it off as well um, i did a gilder's paste demo i feel like i did it on my youtube channel my kate richburg youtube channel a while back we did some stuff with gilder's paste for the bead retreat when i did um resin with um uh metal um and encased in the resin and then i um kind of distressed, I guess is the right word, the tops of them with the Gilder's paste. So pop on over there. It might, it might be over there. If not, I'll do, I'll do one um, because I love playing with colors on, on metal and with metallic resin and stuff. So, but this is a really, it's great. And it also is fairly thick. Let me, um, it's about a little over two millimeters. So it has some nice heft to it. Millie, I saw your nice comment. Thank you so much. Millie is saying that fall in New York City is beautiful. And thank you so much for your kind email um, a little bit earlier today. Thank you. Thank you. And you guys can always reach us um, if you do have email questions. You can certainly send them right over to info at Bead Shop. But to reach Janice and I, it's just our first names, Kate and or Janice um, at BeadShop.com. So that's the best way to find us. Um, so that's these guys here. Okay. And so I just want to show you these that were finished. This really cool one that Janice did. You remember this Adobe um, one? I was thinking what you could do with this two hole butterfly. And I haven't really explored it yet, but it has a hole at the top and the bottom. So you could put your thread through one way, your thread through the other way, tie it on the back you know, do some macrame, then bring it down here through one way, through the other way and tie that on there. It would look pretty cool. I mean, it's big, right? But I think it it has kind of a, a nice look. I like the contrast between the big piece and the skinny leather. Just a thought as I was playing around with them and jumping in. Okay. And so I don't see, I don't see, you might have to re- um, reauthorize with StreamYard, maybe um, the big Facebook outage. 
of 2021. Maybe that kicked you off. But whoever this is, go ahead and re um, go right to uh, StreamYard. You can go uh, because we are going to do a um, a giveaway a little bit later. So you can go when you leave a comment, you can go right to StreamYard. You're going to go to StreamYard and grant permission to see your name at StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. Um, and so then we will see your name rather than just Facebook user. Um, and you could, Wendy's saying you could rivet this to the letter, leather. 110, you could certainly rivet this. And you know how I love to rivet. So yes, yes, you could. Uh, I do have a giveaway for you guys. You're going to have to stay tuned to the end of our broadcast. Um, the giveaway is um, some of these beads from Jesse James beads that were in my um, challenge box. So they're really cool. And they're certainly timely. There's some Halloween-y kind of things here. A really cool chain that has um, a crystal cube in it. And then a bag of kind of these cool winter whites as well, fall whites. Um, I wanted to um, just give a big shout out. Um, if you went over to the Beetle on Challenge and voted, thank you so, so much. And the winner was announced uh, this past Monday. And so a big congratulations to Kelly Dale of Off the Beaded Path, won the Beetle on Challenge, which was great. Um, congratulations, Kelly. Um, I look forward to uh, to following you over there on Off the Beaded Path. So um, yes, um, many, many uh, congratulations to Kelly. And stick around because I'm gonna do this giveaway. And again, a big thank you um, to all of the sponsors who did that. That was really, really fun. So um, that'll be coming up at the end. And Coral, I can, yes, you're, you're on, so. Perfect. And just as a reminder, you guys, for that giveaway, if you are watching in our group only, um, you'll have to do that StreamYard permission if you're watching on YouTube or if you're watching on our um, Facebook page. Uh, we can see you. There's no problem. Okay. But it's those private groups. Since they're private, um, you need to grant permission so StreamYard can show your name. So that's that. All right, so that's taken care of. The uh, challenge is taken care of. I've shown you these pieces. So now it's time to get to the project. Okay. So uh, Melanie is asking, can we do some riveting soon? Yes, we can. We can do some riveting. I also have some wire um, coming up. And I see that Bobby, yes, Bobby, I could see you. Yes, perfect. Um, okay, so uh, let's go. Here is the piece. So you might remember I did a broadcast. It was back in February, which seems crazy that it was that long ago. Um, but I did a wire and chain show back then. And so I went and I actually rewatched it. I don't normally would rewatch my shows, but I rewatched it. It was actually pretty good. <laughs> so a lot of you have um, actually made this piece, which is great. And you guys have posted it over in our, um, in our group. And I've got one actually that I want to show you here. I didn't load it in beforehand, so bear with me here just a second. Um, let me see if I can get that going here. Bear with me. Um, there we go. I see it. And so this one, uh, hold the phone here. I just want to make sure that I have it right. Bear with me here. It's coming up. And so this is Karen's. Karen um, posted this really cool, the one, the, the one that she did. 
There we go. I want to show you that. There it is. You guys can see it. And you can see how she used that really nice um, magnetic clasp. But I want you to see, and I'm going to put this one kind of over to the side so you can see it. Um, what I was doing with this is I was weaving it below the chain. But I really love, you can see here what Karen's done, is she's woven that leather through the last link in the chain which I like a lot too. And then she's left that opening, that kind of little V opening, which I like. So you can do kind of either or. This is a great kind of choose your own adventure kind of closing. So I wanted to put that one up so you guys could actually see it, okay? So, um, but some of you have been making them and posting them in the group, but I never really finished this off. So I wanted to make this from start to finish from, uh, beginning to end from soup to nuts all of it so you guys could actually see it it's a really great piece and as you know i love um to work with leather and chain um it's some of my favorite um combos to work with i also have this one um with the keyholes chain um as a reminder any of our, our chain that has nice big links you can kind of play around with and braid with them. This is a one millimeter, and this is under the leather and chain category. We've got a leather and chain category over on beadshop.com under projects. And so essentially I started it up here and it just winds its way through the chain link, but on the sides, I added a six aught. You can see that there, super, super easy. And then it closes here and it just comes down and there's a little opening there that the clasp goes through. So this is also kind of a fun one. And, you know, the holidays are coming, whether, um, whether we're ready for them or not, right? So these are great, fast gifts. And if you start now, um, you'll have stuff ready to go uh, for the holidays. So this Love of Lydia chain is nice and sturdy. It comes in some different finishes. I used in this one, the antique silver. So let's get it started and I'll show you what I've used. Okay, so here's the Love of Lydia chain. You're not going to need more than um, a, a foot. And I wanted to measure this out and let you know how much I used because the measurements can get a little funky. So this is about five and a half inches of chain here that I used in this one. And even if you go to like six inches, make it a little bit longer, you have enough chain because we sell it by the foot. You have enough for two bracelets. If you want your piece to be a little bit longer, you can always do this kind of weaving here at the end to make things longer or shorter, okay? So this is where um, you can adjust the length on this one, okay? You also don't wanna make it too tight um, when you um, glue your clasp on. This mostly fits okay. This here at the end, and I'll show you when I glue it, you'll see what I mean. It's a little, um, it's just a touch tight, so this chain wants to um, wants to bend just a little. It's not bad, but it's something that I want you to keep an eye out when you make yours so you don't make it too tight. Also, the leather that you use, you're gonna use the point, I'm sorry, the five millimeter strap leather for this, and you'll use a 10 millimeter magnetic clasp. I used the dots clasp here, which I love. We also have it in 20 millimeter. So you could add like a plain um, strap. You could do it in a different color or whatever. If you wanted like a wider cuff, you could do that. Okay, so um, let me measure this. So this here, I use about seven inches or so from door to door. You actually use a little bit more. Um, so let's see. So you can probably get two bracelets 
from the meter, right? Uh, if you only cut, uh, let's see, one foot, well, not quite two. So, and it depends on the length. You're going to see this when I, um, when I lay this out, how you need a little bit extra. I also, when I was making this, and to be honest, I made it yesterday for the broadcast today. Door to door, this is about seven and a quarter inches, about. Maybe it's even a little bit less because this clasp overlaps, so it's maybe just a little over seven. It's a little small for me. I need mine to be a little bit bigger. So, but it fits because my wrist is six and a half inches and it's tight. It fits like a cuff, which I like, but it's a little, um, see that? It's a little tight-ish. I like to get the tip of my finger underneath my bracelet so it has a little bit of movement, but it's fine. I could definitely wear this, but I would want to... Um, make mine just so i'm going to make the sample today just a touch longer okay and we'll look at the clasp to make sure that's right and i'll also talk about how to get these ends even and yeah maureen is asking this is called book chain it is called book chain it's based on a vintage this is new but it's based on a vintage chain sometimes you see the book chain without the little knobs on the loops and sometimes you see it with Okay, and so Janice, this is a little um, history behind it. Um, we named it the Love of Lydia Chain after Janice's mom, who would have loved the style. She loved all things vintage. Okay. So, and um, Millie is asking, will it stretch with time? It probably won't stretch, Millie, because this is so woven. Um, it might, though, a little, but it's not going to stretch much. Okay. And John is also saying it's wide. It has some width to it. So it does need to be a little bit longer. And it's also not only wide this way, but it's width here with this chain and with the um, weaving cord and with the leather, it gives it some bulk. So again, you'll need it. Um, you'll need it to have just a little more length so it has a little a little bit of movement to it okay so um i'm gonna cut this chain i'm gonna give myself one more link here let me just fold it in half let me make sure this is a foot so that we can get, oh, see, mine's just a little short. I used a a um, a uh, a scrap that I had here. Okay, so I'm gonna say if it was this long, it was about five and a half inches. I'm gonna cut mine a full inch longer. I'm gonna go to six and a half inches. Okay, and that will give me enough. To get two and let me show you i don't have to do it off camera the way that i do this you could open up these links they open right here they're a little tough to get closed though so what i do is i just come in with my heavy duty zerons and i come in and i cut that little round link so i've got my length right there okay i'm probably going to have to remove Maybe this last one, I might have cut it a little bit long, but I want to go a little bit long rather than a little bit short. Okay, so there's that. Now, I'm going to cut, uh, let me see. I'm just doing some quick math here. So if I cut these, if 36 inches, if a, uh, well, a meter, it's actually a meter, so it's a little bit longer. But if it's 36 inches and I divide those 36 inches by four, if I wanted to get um, four out of here, I could. So let me cut these at eight inches, and this should give me enough. Okay, so I'm going to cut them at eight. 
That way, you'll be able to get two out of your meter. Okay. So here it is. So these are eight inches long. Obviously, if you need a bracelet that's a little bit longer, you're gonna um, you're gonna measure these out a little bit longer, right? But for my wrist, six and a half, this is what I'm working with. Okay, so here and here, and there's our chain. Okay, so I'm gonna put this aside. Oh, Andrea just joined us. Andrea, we'll say a big. Hello, Andrew is also in the Beetle on Challenge, and you did very well. It was a really nice uh, piece you made, so it's great to have you watching over here today. Okay, and uh, let me see. There was another question here. Roseanne asked, "What would you suggest to beef it up for a man?" I wouldn't. I don't think you need to beef it up. I think this sucker is plenty beefy. I think it looks great. I think it would be a great dude bracelet. Um, like this. Um, so I think it's, it is definitely an all purpose, all purpose design. Okay. So to start, oh, and here's the leather. My brain is working much faster than my mouth is today. So bear with me here. This is the 1.5 millimeter. Okay. And so that's what I would that's what I would use. I think one millimeter is a little thin. This is the one millimeter that I used on this one. This one's called Passageway. It's also online. I use the one mil. I think it's a little thin. I think two millimeter, you could try, two millimeter might be a little bit big for this, but if you have it, try two millimeter because there's plenty of room in here. So maybe that's a way that you could beef it up. Maybe by upping this, size of the leather okay so the way that i started this and the way and i was watching my the broadcast where i kind of played around with this it was a little um i was bumbling around a little bit when i was weaving this okay so i think to streamline it maybe start in the center and so i cut our leather comes in four yard spools i cut two yards so that's what i'm using here okay um we're gonna come in and when i close this wendy i'm going to talk about measuring for the clasp okay so the beginning getting this started is where it's a little funny so I have my bead design board, not funny, that's not the right word, but it can be a little bit of a challenge. So I'm gonna bring my chain in. You could also do this on a macrame board and clip it to the macrame board. But I'm gonna kind of slide these guys in and see about how much width I need. You see kind of how I did that-ish? Okay, kind of like that. And I'm going to leave these ends kind of open. Then I'm just going to kind of lay this here. And I know that I've got some extra up there and some extra down there. That's really it. And then I'm going to find the center of my cord. And I'm going to pick... A link doesn't have to be exactly in the middle. I'm just going to pick one. And I'm going to send my leather through to find the center. Okay, that's about the center. Now, the way that I've woven this, and it's a little funny until you get it done. I've woven this like the infinity stitch. Okay, so it comes over the side and then under and then over the side and then under so see how this one on my right hand side is coming over this one 
on the left is now going under. See that right there? Now this is coming up from the right. I'm sorry, from the left and going through the book chain, through the link and tightening. And now going under the chain. and back through that same link. Okay, so each strand or each pass goes through that link forward and back. Okay, so now I'm gonna tighten it up doing this one up here, so bear with me here. Okay, so I've come under, so I need to go over here. I'm going to pop this up, make that space. You can start from the top if you want and move yourself down, but I found that starting in the middle kind of allowed me to um, tighten everything and get everything kind of all set. And then I went up from the top, up from the top here and down from the bottom there. So see that now? I've kind of gotten those stitches in. Now what I do is I unpin it and I just hold this in my hand. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to use this one and you can fix this kind of the little balls kind of want to kind of float around here. But now I'm just going to come. So here this one went under. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to go over the leather on the right. I'm sorry, over the leather on the left. Sometimes I don't get my right and my left correct and that doesn't help you guys watching it. Let me get that strand out of the way. And then I pass it back over the leather on the right and tuck it under the leather on the left. Now your um, Your leather is going to be a little bit loose until you kind of get in the groove. So come back in and kind of tighten it up. But again, you don't want this to be too tight because it needs to kind of curve around your wrist and you don't want your chain to buckle. This looks pretty good, except there's just it's a little tight in one place. This link right here is buckling just a little but I'll, I'll show we're going to remedy that at the end. So now I'm going to weave a little bit faster. So I go over the leather on the left, under the leather on the right, back up and over the leather on the right, and under the leather on the left. And that one's done. Tighten it up. Sometimes you can pull right here on the leather on the right. See how that one tightens and then pull to the left and it tightens. Okay. So let's keep this going. So over, and under, and over, and under. Essentially, it is the infinity stitch with leather. And you decide what works the best for you. Um, if you need to lash this down to your board, you can. But I like holding it in my hand. And you can see there's plenty of room here for that cord to go through. Okay. We also have um, those rounded rectangle 
closures that are 10 millimeters in width. So if you wanted to make this part of a wrap bracelet, which I actually thought about, and then I was like, I don't have that kind of time in my life this week. Um, you could attach those rounded rectangle loops to the end instead of a clasp. And it could be a wrap bracelet section, which would look great. So see, now I'm finally getting into the groove a little bit. And go under. And just turn as you're going. Make sure as I'm putting this in, see these are a little looser now, which I, I like. It was a little, my first one was a little, it was a little tight. But you don't want it to be too loose because you don't want this chain to kind of move around too much, but you'll find the correct tension. And under. Whoops, make sure, see that one, that little round ball wanted to pop underneath. So make sure it pops up on the top. So you can, like I was saying before, I'm going to come in, I'm going to tighten that side. You can use your awl too, if you wanted to kind of grab onto it. But I feel like pinching this with my fingers and pulling it seems to work okay. There we go. Take out that slack. And for a monochromatic look, uh, the black leather, black leather, black strap leather, and this silver chain would look amazing. Um, we have these clasps in all the different colors, so you could match the clasp to your chain color, or you could mix metal it however you wanted to do it. Okay, and I think that two millimeter leather would also work okay and it is it's fast right i'm i'm gonna have this other side done in just a moment for you so i'm gonna leave this kind of here i'm not gonna do anything else right what i do want to make sure of though now is see here how this leather has kind of slip down a bit so i'm going to bring that back center now you could weave up but i like weaving towards me so i'm going to turn this around and i'm going to tighten this one kind of where i i can just see it needs a little bit of tightening so the tension is nice and tighten this up There we go. And now pull this one. Okay. So this goes over. Uh, no, this goes under. Sorry, that wasn't right. That goes under. Over the leather. And pops down. and over under the leather back through now there's plenty of room in these chain links so you could make if you were using a thinner leather so let's say in um, that you had the Love of Lydia chain, but maybe you only had one millimeter leather. You could pass the leather with the one millimeter through twice. So you could do this path once and then go back through twice. So you'd have kind of a double, um, a double strand going through each link. That would also look nice, right? You could also do this maybe with wax linen and pass it through that link maybe three times, one, two, three. So it would be a little, you know, you wouldn't have kind of this nubby 
feeling, you would have a flatter look and the wax linen would kind of grab onto the leather. That would also work. You decide what works with your, um, you know, with your design. Go, this is just a base for you to use. Kim is saying that you could use the one millimeter in two different colors, which would also look really good, right? So however, however you want to play around with it, but essentially you're just weaving over and under, turning around and weaving over and under. So here's this. And now let's give this a measure. Let me go back through and let's take a look at the end. Uh, okay, so here we go. So from that chain to this chain right here, this is about five and three quarters of an inch, okay? The one that I did here from the ends of the chain lengths is about five and a quarter. So I made this about half an inch longer, which is what I wanted to do for this, okay? So that was right. So this length, just as a reminder, this chain length. Oh, and look what I did. I pushed, okay, this is interesting. I was just kind of arranging it. And this is what happened. Watch. If I pull it, see how this one, those links are kind of tight right there. Watch. If I kind of pull it out a little bit, see how those links kind of open up a bit. Can you see that? That might look a little bit better. And it'll also keep this from buckling. Can you see the difference? These are, it's slight, but it's there. Those are a little more closed. These are a little more open. See how we're always learning when we make these pieces. So let me measure this one more time. I think that this chain was six and a half inches when I started it. So it's kind of truncated up, tightened up a little bit to about six and a quarter. Okay. So there it is. So now this is the time if you want to look and adjust these ends. If anything needs to be pulled in. This one feels a little loose. So I'm going to pull it tighter. Let me see. Do I have my all? I do. So it's this one. This one's a little loose. So I'm going to tighten it by pulling, getting my awl and pulling it under here, right? Let me get that. Okay, and then here, that tightens. I can really get tightening a lot better than pinching with my fingers using this awl. And it also will make the leather sit nicely. This is distressed green that I used. And I use distressed green, honestly, <laughs> I'll tell you, because that's what we had the most of when I started deciding what to use for this design. But I also really like the distressed. Um, I like the way it looks like next to this kind of nice shiny strap leather, but you could use any color that worked for you. I really also liked the distressed violet looked beautiful. You can make it a little more monochromatic. See how I'm coming in and pulling this a little, um, see how much slack I'm getting up there? I like that. The all is much better. I don't know why I didn't use it yesterday, but probably because I was rushing. You know how it is. You have a deadline. And Drea's like, we're going to have a photo for this project. I said, yes, yes, we will. I promise we will. So I really wanted to finish it. So, but in my haste, what is it? Something, something in haste, repent at leisure. I don't know what that old adage is, but anyway. So here it is. So I think that looks pretty good. So we're good to go. I like this.
Okay. So, uh, okay. So now we want to look. Let me show you this photo one more time from Karen, uh, the way that she did hers. So see how, can you see right there? Let me see if I can get my finger there. How when she ended it, she, it looks like she went back and forth about three times in the chain itself like that and maybe um, glued it on the inside. And then that opening at the end was open. What I did was I wove the ends here instead of leaving it open. Either will work. Now, the thing is, the other reason why this is a little tight, okay, is because when I wove and I, when I went to glue this clasp on, clasp on I pushed this clasp up as tight as I could, made this weaving really tight, and it pushed on this chain. And so you can see, see here how that chain is buckling just a little. So you really want to make sure that um, you don't weave in and out here and push it so tight that you're going to get that chain to buckle. Okay. So let's take a look at the clasp. So Wendy, I think, was the one who had the question about the clasp. And so I've got a piece of some scrap leather here. And let's take a look at the size of the interior. So if I put this leather inside right there and I get my Sharpie marker, a skinny Sharpie. Okay. I'm going to come in and I'm going to mark it here. So this gives me, let's be real precise, about, it's about four and a half, about four millimeters, okay, or about mm, one, two, three, maybe three eighths of an inch there, okay. And then on this side, let's see if it's the same. Sometimes the clasps aren't. See how this one is a little more shallow. Okay, so maybe this is about, maybe it's, I don't know, maybe a quarter of an inch. Let's see. Yeah, just a little shy, just a little bit shorter. So when you are cutting um, cutting your thread, your, your strap, this is the length that you're going to leave for the clasp to go in. Okay, so um, what am I trying to say? Well, you'll see when I do it. It'll, it'll all just go with me on this. Okay, so here is... Oh, this one is also under. You're right. Um, Yolanda's saying one link with the ball is underneath. I didn't catch it. Let me see if I can. Because once it's there, and that's also what's making it. I don't know if I can move it. Well, this one, we'll do it on this one. So, yeah, check them because you don't want this to happen. Okay. So, Okay. I want this piece to come out door to door, as I like to say, seven and a half inches. So I'm going to give myself, because it'll be easier for me to do, I'm going to give myself a little template. So it's going to go from here to here. That's my length. Okay. So, um, and maybe I'll mark my, it looks like three and three quarters. That's about my center line. Okay. 
it's a little bit easier to deal with this surface than it is to have my um, tape measure going all over the place. Okay, let me just draw a little line so I've got something to kind of, maybe I'll get a pen that works. How about that? Let's try this one. There we go. Okay, so there's my kind of little template, such as it is. Okay, so I'm going to lay my, let me count, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I've got 18 lengths, so 9-ish, like this one in between those lengths is probably the center. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Six, seven, eight, nine. So that's about my center point right there. Okay. So uh, I'm looking at now this end. Okay. And so this is going to go over just a little bit there. That's going to go over just a little bit there. So that looks right. So this is like the closure that I've got to, to deal with here. I've got about this much room, about this much room. I think... I'm going to weave again because I like the way that the weaving looks. Okay. So um, now I need to figure out with this clasp, see how there's some overlap here, right? So the actual length of the clasp is just this length I add and all of this length, okay? So this side should be about a quarter of an inch. Yeah, about a quarter. And this side is about half an inch. So if I put this in at a quarter, and I've got that little bit of an overlap, or a little bit of that, you know, it go on the inside there. And then I've got this one. And that's going to be my interior, my, my overlap. So it looks like I'm going to weave about three quarters of an inch on both sides. Let's see how that looks. Okay. And you can see sometimes you have to do this. I'm going to write myself a little bit note. Uh, sometimes you just have to do this by feel, right? Because again, I'm going to weave all of this. Then I'm going to try it around my wrist and then I'm going to adjust. Once you have one that really works, then you can take that measurement off of that one. But once you have, um, glued this clasp on, <clears throat> that's all she wrote, right? So I'm going to go through uh, back here and down and back here and down. Now, if you wanted to close it like Karen did, she just went back through and back through, back through and back through, and then glued that end inside there, okay? And no weaving on the bottom, but I'm going to weave. So what I'm going to do on this one, I wove one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. I did five there, and I think I did four on this side, so it wasn't even. Okay, so I'm going to weave one time, two times, and see how I'm getting it kind of tighten. I tighten it in as I go. 
because my goal is to bring these two ends in so that they sit one next to each other so they sit in the clasp. So that's two. Here's three. Tighten it up. Here's four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And here's five. Okay. Now you can see, see how I've tightened them up? <clears throat> so they're sitting together like this. Okay. So I'm going to use my clamper, and I'm going to clamp that down. <clears throat> Pardon me. Whoops. I lost my demo cam, and now you can see me. Hang on. Let me. Uh... There we go. We're back. Linda's asking, and let me address this question now. Linda's saying, how do I get one side of the leather not to go at an angle and as opposed to the other, which sits straight? It kind of does. See here, it kind of goes at an angle. That has to do with the tension. As I was pulling it with the awl, I was also kind of making it sit kind of straight. But this isn't made by a machine. Um, and you can see that's the center point, so I started the weave going one way and the weave going the other. So it's going to look a little bit different. And if you look at your infinity bracelets, right, when you do this, you do have that weave where one is a little tilted and one's a little straight. It's a little more exaggerated with the leather just because the leather is a little bit heftier. But I wouldn't worry about it too much on your, uh, your piece. And especially when it's around your wrist, it's not going to be really noticed. So let me finish this side up. I'm going to weave everything and I'm going to measure. Again, making jewelry like this, you guys, is like a couture dress, right? You have to try it on and try it on and try it on to make sure it fits, All right? So there's one. And one. That's two. And another is three. Tightening it up as you go. <clears throat> there's four. And here's five. And I'll clip it. <clears throat> okay. So, yeah, as my mom says, measure twice, cut once. We learned that in quilting, right, Ma? So what I do here is I'm going to, connect this clasp because I don't want anything to go wrong. I don't want to lose it. I, you know, so this is the length that I'm going to incorporate and it's about three quarters of an inch. Okay. So I'm going to bring this, let me raise the camera up a little bit. I'm going to bring this around. <clears throat> and you can see here, as I look at it on my wrist, that I think five wraps, I can just tell, five wraps is too long, I think. I think, though I kind of like that feel. Maybe it's not. This is where, when I was doing this yesterday, I was like, oh my gosh, what do I do? How do I do this? What do I do? You know, what's the right length? So what I did, what I think I need, and I'm going to go grab it. I'm going to have you guys look at that. I think I need some tape. I think that is what I need because I think those clampers are a little too um, heavy. So I can't get a good, um, a good size on it. So I'm running into the fulfillment room. I'm grabbing some tape. I'm also grabbing my toothpicks as I go by. 
and I'll be right back on camera. Let's tape this closed. You can use painter's tape, but I just grabbed some scotch tape because that's what we, that's what I had. Okay, so let me tape this closed. So um, let me take that off. Let me get my tape. That way I can also kind of see what's happening. Now I know that I'm not going to make this any longer here. So I'm going to cut this away too. And I'm going to glue that down. So don't, don't worry about that. But I'm cutting that because it's, it's bugging me. So goodbye that. And now that's taped. Let me do this other side. And if this marks it at all, it doesn't matter. It's going to be in the clasp. So I'm not worried. You take this off. Slap a piece of tape on there. And when I say slap a piece of tape on there, I mean put it on with care. <laughs> but this is also where I pushed when I shoved the clasp up. That's also not a very elegant word, but when I put the clasp up on these, you know, the leather, I really pushed it up tight so it was pushing on this weaving portion, okay? So see here how it's also, it's kind of, it's not as loose as I want it to be. So I'm just kind of moving it down a little bit so that this doesn't sit too tightly. There we go. And I also want to make sure I've got enough room here, okay? Robin is asking, it's a great question. Robin, do you recommend putting a protective clear coating on the chain before making this bracelet? All of these chains have an anti-tarnish coating on them. So they are, the base is brass and they have been plated. I have been using our chains for forever, really, uh, for a long time. And I have no trouble with tarnishing and we put them through the ringer you could if you wanted to add a protective clear coating you could if that's kind of your jam when you do your jewelry but um you don't have to okay so this is much easier for me to deal with and to figure out the length right so i can also do some math here i can i really can so let's measure this again. From the bottom of that weaving to the bottom of that weaving is seven inches, plus this clasp is three quarters of an inch. I think this is gonna be right. It might just be a slight, since it's wider, right? That seven and three quarters is probably the way I want it to fit, okay? So, I'm gonna go for it. Let me put this piece of paper down so I don't get glue everywhere. I'm gonna make sure my zap glue is ready to go, and it is. I'm gonna get my toothpick. All right. So Leslie is asking, and it's a very good observation, Leslie, how do I cut the thin leather? How come it's not unraveling? Well, I cut it, <clears throat> this weave is pretty tight right here. Okay, so it's not going anywhere. What I am gonna do, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna peel back this tape and I'm gonna glue down this piece of leather right here. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do first. I'm gonna clip it. <clears throat> just a little bit more so it doesn't hang over the edge and I'm gonna glue so I'm gonna use zap I'm gonna get some zap I'm gonna extrude some zap glue onto my baggie okay I'm going to get just a little bit of that. I'm going to lift that tail, 
put a little bit of glue under there and push it down with my toothpick. I'm going to hold it for a minute. And that zap does just what it says. It grabs it really quickly. Okay. And then I'm going to get any extra glue out of there. Okay. And I can press it down on this side. So that side's done. So now I'm going to take this glue, this tape off. And I'm going to go for this side. I had that little piece of leather that I had marked. Where it is, I have no idea. So I'm just going to remark another one. I'm going to put it on this side. So I need to leave about, and I'm going to go on the one that's on the bottom, right? From here, I'm going to measure, not from this side, because that's the lowest one. And I'm going to make a mark where I'm going to cut that leather. And I'm just going to cut it. Not be afraid. Let me get my, and I'm going to try and cut it straight across like this. I'm going to use my cutters, my wire cutters do it. Now I'm going to go in from the back. I'm going to get my glue. I'm going to slide my glue on the back of that cord. And on the ends, right? Because these ends are going to come in contact with the back wall of this clasp. And now we're just going to put these right inside. And again, don't, my tendency is to want to shove it right up there, right? You just want to place it in. You don't want to shove it too tight because you don't want this weaving to push this chain. So there's that one. Okay, nice and clean on the back. If there's any extra glue that comes out, just take it away with your toothpick. So now let's do this other side. <clears throat> Let me remove a little bit of this tape. A little bit of zap. Get that down there. Just put it right where that leather is going to lay down. Push that little tip of leather over. Hold it there for a second. Like so. And you guys, before I put the clasp on this side, let's let that sit for a moment. And let's go ahead and I want you, uh, we're going to start the comments for the giveaway. So I have, for those of you who tuned in a little bit later, I have this really fantastic bag of Jesse James beads that were left over from my bead along challenge. We've got some chain, some really cool black beads, some spooky ones are in there, and then a bag of the white and silver beads. So what you're going to do is to be entered in to this drawing, you are going to make sure that before leaving a comment, you have granted StreamYard permission to see your name at StreamYard.com forward slash Facebook. You only need to do that if you are in watching from our bead table group. If you're watching on YouTube or watching from our beadshop.com page, you're good to go. You don't need to do this step. Then what you are going to do is you are going to enter hashtag beads in the comments to enter the giveaway. Okay, hashtag beads and giveaway entries are accepted on our live broadcast today, 10-6-21 only. 
So hashtag beads in the comments, everybody. So I'm going to let that sit there, and I'm going to get our um, our drawing ready to go. So bear with me here just a second while I do that. And then we'll get back to putting the clasp on. Okay. Great. I can see all y'all doing this. Looks great. So let's get this clasp. So let me take this off. Now I'm just going to come in, if I can get this tape off my finger. I'm going to just get my little, this one was a little, as I remember, it was a little shorter. So I'm just going to get my little piece of leather in there. Make that length. Come in and transfer it over to this side, which looks like about right there. That looks about right. And we're going to cut it away. <clears throat> Lori, I'm sorry, Sandra. Uh, Lori, you're on. Hashtag beads. You got it. Sometimes you don't always see the comments, but you're good. Here we go. Cutting this away. Let's add our tape. I mean, sorry, add our glue. We've taken off the tape. I'm going to add a little more glue down there. So I flip it to the back, slide that glue on, slide the glue on the tips of the leather. We don't want to over glue, right? Because you don't want that glue kind of going everywhere once you put your clasp on. Now, this is important. This is why I keep my clasp connected. Okay, because if it's not and I accidentally glue this clasp upside down, that's it, right? So keep it connected. Then just insert that leather. I said just insert that leather. There we go. So it's in there. If there's a little, there's a little excess glue right here. So I'm going to get my toothpick and take it off. Now, I will let this sit about, if this were real jewelry making time, I'd let it sit overnight, right, and not disturb it. But I'm going to let it sit there for a second. <clears throat> After we do the drawing, I'll open it up. I'll give the glue a chance to set up a little bit, and then we'll double check the length, OK? But it looks super clean. Look at that back, the front. It's a, I think it's a stunner, if I do say so myself. I don't know. I like it. And yes, we do carry the zap. You can find everything right over at beadshop.com. Well, let us go ahead and I'm going to add in the giveaway um, screen. Bear with me here just a second while I do that. There we go. All right, everybody. I am ready. If you are, whoops, let's go ahead and hit that draw button for this fantastic prize. 
Kelly, you are the winner of this fantastic drawing today. So Ellie, what you are going to do is you are going to email your mailing information to info at beadshop.com. And I will put this little bag um, uh, right in the mail to you. And you will uh, you'll uh, have fun times, I hope, creating with um, with this piece. So congratulations, Allie. Yay. Excellent. Well, let me uh, measure. Uh, here, let me get me up front. There we go. So I'm going to put this aside. That'll be going out to you, Allie. So just email Drea again at info at beadshop.com and I'll get it out to you. So let's go ahead and measure this door to door and see. Well, first I'm going to see how it fit. I just want to put it on and then I'll measure. Yeah. See that? That is a perfect fit for me. That's exactly how I like it. Okay. Right there. And so let me measure. And yet from here to here, seven and a half inches. Perfect. So with that chain kind of closing up, truncating itself just a little bit during the weave and stuff, that is just about exactly right. And I would actually wear it on this wrist right here. And it fits just perfectly. I love it. I love it. I'm going to stack it with this one. See, this one's a little bit tighter. But look at how... If one is good, two is better, right? There we go. They look kind of cool, doubled up too. I like it. Wendy's asking, how do we know uh, who won the giveaway? We do that. Um, we have a tool, um, Wendy, that when you put the hashtag in, and then after everyone's put the hashtag in, I push go on our giveaway tool, and they uh, randomly choose the winner, and you can see right there up on the screen. That's how it happens. So it's kind of fun. We're going to be using this giveaway tool a lot um, during our this month and especially on that last broadcast of the month to celebrate our fifth anniversary of broadcasting starting into our sixth year. So don't uh, miss um, signing up for our newsletter. Uh, and let me put this up right here, this closing screen. So um, find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. You can sign up for our newsletter for the latest discounts, giveaways, and new products. I've got a lot of great new fun stuff coming up uh, this, this month. Um, I, may, I cannot confirm or deny that there may or may not be a Kate curated kit coming. I can't, maybe it is true. And we've got some new product coming, fun stuff like that. I love how these two look together. I love them. I think they look great. I think they're really super fun. So I hope you enjoyed this leather and chain broadcast today. I certainly enjoyed uh, sharing it with you. I'm going to wear these all day. I'm going to pose, pose at my desk. Um, so thank you guys so, so much for joining me. On Friday, we're going to be working with the monthly mix. Um, I don't know if you have grabbed your monthly mix yet, but um, it's called uh, Fire Opal. Um, and I'm going to be playing around with some more ideas um, for it. I think you guys will kind of, kind of like it. Um, we're going to be playing around with some ideas with that. So that's going to be Friday. So uh, the next week, I've got something new for you, and it's going to involve wire. I think you guys are going to like that too. And that's what I've got. So have a fantastic week, you guys. I will see you on Friday for Free Tip Friday. And I will see you. Um, I'll see you then. Thanks so much, everybody, for watching. Take it easy, be creative, and I'll see you soon. Thanks so much, everybody.